This is section 12 of the complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Trimmer's Opinion Concerning the Protestant Religion Religion hath such a superiority above other things, and that indispensable influence upon all mankind, that it is as necessary to our living happy in this world as it is to our being saved in the next. Without it man is an abandoned creature, one of the worst beasts nature hath produced, and fit only for the society of wolves and bears. Therefore in all ages it hath been the foundation of government, and though false gods have been imposed upon the credulous part of the world, yet they were gods still in their opinion, and the awe and reverence men had to them and their oracles kept them within bounds towards one another, which the laws, with all their authority, could never have effected without the help of religion. The laws would not be able to subdue the perverseness of men's wills, which are wild beasts, and require a double chain to keep them down. For this reason, tis said, that it is not a sufficient ground to make war upon a neighboring state, because they are of another religion, let it be never so differing, yet if they worship nor acknowledge no deity at all, they may be invaded as public enemies of mankind, because they reject the only thing that can bind them to live well with one another. The consideration of religion is so twisted with that of government, that it is never to be separated, and though the foundations of it ought to be eternal and unchangeable, yet the terms and circumstances of discipline are to be suited to the several climates and constitutions, so that they may keep men in a willing acquiescence unto them, without discomposing the world by nice disputes, which can never be of equal moment with the public peace our religion here in england seemeth to be distinguished by a peculiar effect of god almighty's goodness in permitting it to be introduced or rather restored by a more regular method than the circumstances of most other reformed churches would allow them to do in relation to the government and the dignity with which it hath supported itself since and the great men of our church hath produced ought to recommend it to the esteem of all protestants at least our trimmer is very partial to it for these reasons and many more and desireth that it may preserve its due jurisdiction and authority so far he is from wishing it oppressed by the unreasonable and malicious cavils of those who take pains to raise objections against it the questions will then be how and by what methods this church shall best support itself, the present circumstances considered, in relation to dissenters of all sorts. I will first lay this for a ground, that as there can be no true religion without charity, so there can be no true humane prudence without bearing and condescension. This principle doth not extend to oblige the church always to yield to those who are disposed to contest with her, the expediency of doing it is to be considered and determined according to the occasion, and this leads me to lay open the thoughts of our trimmer, in reference first to the Protestants, and then to the Popish recusants. What hath lately happened among us? maketh an apology necessary for saying anything that looketh like favour towards a sort of men who have brought themselves under such a disadvantage. The late conspiracy hath such broad symptoms of the disaffection of the whole party, that upon the first reflections, while our thoughts are warm, it would almost persuade us to put them out of the protection of our good nature and to think that the Christian indulgence which our compassion for other men's sufferings cannot easily deny, seemeth not only to be forfeited by the ill appearances that are against them, but even becometh a crime when it is so misapplied. Yet for all this 
upon second and cooler thoughts moderate men will not be so ready to involve a whole party in the guilt of a few and to admit inferences and presumptions to be evidence in a case where the sentence must be so heavy as it ought to be against all those who have a fixed resolution against the government established besides men who act by a principle grounded upon moral virtue can never let it be clearly extinguished by the most repeated provocations if a right thing agreeable to nature and good sense taketh root in the heart of a man that is impartial and unbiased no outward circumstances can ever destroy it it is true the degrees of a man's zeal for the prosecution of it may be differing the faults of other men the considerations of the public and the seasonable prudence by which wise men will ever be directed may give great allays they may lessen and for a time perhaps suppress the exercise of that which in general propositions may be reasonable but still whatever is so will inevitably grow and spring up again having a foundation in nature which is never to be destroyed our trimmer therefore endeavoreth to separate the detestation of those who had either a hand or a thought in the late plot from the principle of prudential as well as christian charity towards mankind and for that reason would fain use the means of reclaiming such of the dissenters as are not incurable and even of bearing to a degree those that are as far as may consist with the public interest and security he is far from justifying an affected separation from the communion of the church and even in those that mean well and are mistaken he looketh upon it as a disease that hath seized upon their minds very troublesome as well as dangerous by the consequence it may produce he doth not go about to excuse their making it an indispensable duty to meet in numbers to say their prayers such meetings may prove mischievous to the state at least the laws which are the best judges have determined that there is danger in them he hath good nature enough to lament that the perverseness of a part should have drawn rigorous laws upon the whole body of the dissenters but when they are once made no private opinion must stand in opposition to them if they are in themselves reasonable they are in that respect to be regarded even without being enjoined if by the change of time and circumstances they should become less reasonable than when they were first made even then they are to be obeyed too because they are laws till they are mended or repealed by the same authority that enacted them he hath too much deference to the constitution of our government to wish for more prerogative declarations in favor of scrupulous men or to dispense with penal laws in such manner or to such an end that suspecting men might with some reason pretend that so hated a thing as persecution could never make way for itself with any hopes of success otherwise than by preparing the deluded world by a false prospect of liberty and indulgence the inward springs and wheels whereby the engine moved are now so fully laid open and exposed that it is not supposable that such a baffled experiment should ever be tried again the effect it had at the time and the spirit it raised will not easily be forgotten and it may be presumed the remembrance of it may secure us from any more attempts of that nature for the future we must no more break a law to give men ease than we are to rifle an ouse with a devout intention of giving the plunder to the poor in this case our compassion would be as ill-directed as our charity in the other in short the veneration due to the laws is never to be thrown off let the pretenses be never so specious yet with all this he cannot bring himself to think that an extraordinary diligence to take the uttermost penalty of laws upon the poor offending neighbor is of itself such an all-sufficient virtue 
that without anything else to recommend men it should entitle them to all kind of preferments and rewards he would not detract from the merits of those who execute the laws yet he cannot think such a piece of service as this can entirely change the man and either make him a better divine or a more knowing magistrate than he was before especially if it be done with a partial and unequal hand in reverence to greater and more dangerous offenders our trimmer would have those mistaken men ready to throw themselves into the arms of the church and he would have those arms as ready to receive them that shall come to us he would have no supercilious look to fright those strayed sheep from coming into the fold again no ill-natured maxims of an eternal suspicion or a belief that those who have once been in the wrong can never be in the right again but a visible preparation of mind to receive with joy all the proselytes that come amongst us and much greater earnestness to reclaim than punish them it is to be confessed there is a great deal to forgive a hard task enough for the charity of a church so provoked but that must not cut off all hopes of being reconciled yet if there must be some anger left still let it break out into a christian revenge and by being kinder to the children of disobedience than they deserve let the injured church triumph by throwing shame and confusion of face upon them there should not always be storms and thunder a clear sky would sometime make the church look more like heaven and would do more towards the reclaiming those wanderers than a perpetual terror which seemeth to have no intermission for there is in many and particularly in english men a mistaken pleasure in resisting the dictates of rigorous authority a stomach that riseth against a hard imposition nay in some even a lust in suffering from a wrong point of honour which doth not want the applause from the greater part of mankind who have not learnt to distinguish constancy will be thought a virtue even where it is a mistake and the ill-judging world will be apt to think that opinion most right which produceth the greatest number of those who are willing to suffer for it all this is prevented and falleth to the ground by using well-timed indulgence and the stubborn adversary who valueth himself upon his resistance whilst he is oppressed yieldeth insensibly to kind methods when they are applied to him and the same man naturally melteth into conformity who perhaps would never have been beaten into it we may be taught by the compassion that attendeth the most criminal men when they are condemned that faults are much more natural things than punishments and that even the most necessary acts of severity do some kind of violence to our nature whose indulgence will not be confined within the straight bounds of inexorable justice so that this should be an argument for gentleness besides that it is the likeliest way to make these men ashamed of their separation whilst the pressing them too hard tendeth rather to make them proud of it our trimmer would have the clergy supported in their lawful rights and in all the power and dignity that belongeth to them and yet he thinketh that possibly there may be in some of them a too great eagerness to extend the ecclesiastical jurisdiction which though it may be well intended yet the straining of it too high hath an appearance of ambition that raiseth men's objections to it and is so far unlike the apostolic zeal which was quite otherwise employed that the world draweth inferences from it which do the church no service he is troubled to see men of all sides sick of a calenture of a mistaken devotion and it seemeth to him that the devout fire of mistaken charity with which the primitive christians were inflamed is long since extinguished and instead of it a devouring fire of anger and persecution breaketh out in the world we wrangle now one with another about religion till the blood cometh 
whilst the ten commandments have no more authority with us than if they were so many obsolete laws or proclamations out of date he thinketh that a nation will hardly be mended by principles of religion where morality is made a heresy and therefore as he believeth devotion misplaced when it gets into a conventicle he concludeth that loyalty is so too when lodged in a drunken club those virtues deserve a better seat of empire and they are degraded when such men undertake their deference as have too great need of an apology themselves our trimmer wisheth that some knowledge may go along with the zeal on the right side than that those who are in possession of the pulpit would quote at least so often the authority of the scriptures as they do that of the state there are many who borrow too often arguments from the government to use against their adversaries and neglect those that are more proper and would be more powerful a divine groweth less and putteth a diminution on his own character when he quoteth any law but that of god almighty to get the better of those who contest with him and as it is a sign of a decayed constitution when nature with good diet cannot expel nauseous humours without calling foreign drugs to her assistance so it looketh like want of health in a church when instead of depending upon the power of that truth which it holdeth and the good examples of them that teach it to support itself and to suppress errors it should have a perpetual recourse to the secular authority and even upon the slightest occasions our trimmer hath his objections to the too busy diligence and to the overdoing of some of the dissenting clergy and he doth as little approve of those of our church who wear god almighty's liveries as some old warders in the tower do the kings who do nothing in their place but receive their wages for it he thinketh that the liberty of the late times gave men so much light and diffused it so universally amongst the people that they are not now to be dealt with as they might have been in ages of less inquiry and therefore though in some well-chosen and dearly beloved auditories good resolute nonsense backed with authority may prevail yet generally men are become so good judges of what they hear that the clergy ought to be very wary how they go about to impose upon their understandings which are grown less humble than they were in former times when the men in black had made learning such a sin in the laity that for fear of offending they made a conscience of being able to read but now the world is grown saucy and expecteth reasons and good ones too before they give up their own opinions to other men's dictates though never so magisterially delivered to them our trimmer is far from approving the hypocrisy which seemeth to be the reigning vice amongst some of the dissenting clergy he thinketh it the most provoking sin men can be guilty of in relation to heaven and yet which may seem strange that very sin which shall destroy the soul of the man who preacheth may help to save those of the company that hear him and even those who are cheated by the false ostentation of his strictness of life may by that pattern be encouraged to the real practice of those christian virtues which he doth so deceitfully profess so that the detestation of this fault may possibly be carried on too far by our own orthodox divines if they think it cannot be enough expressed without bending the stick another way a dangerous method and a worse extreme for men of that character who by going to the outmost line of christian liberty will certainly encourage others to go beyond it no man doth less approve the ill-bred methods of some of the dissenters in rebuking authority who behave themselves as if they thought ill manners necessary to salvation yet he cannot but distinguish and desire a mean between the sauciness of some of the scotch apostles and the undecent courtship of some of the silken divines who one would think do practice to bow at the altar only to learn to make the better legs at court 
our trimmer approveth the principles of our church that dominion is not founded in grace and that our obedience is to be given to a popish king in other things at the same time that our compliance with him in his religion is to be denied yet he cannot but think it a very extraordinary thing if a protestant church should by a voluntary election choose a papist for their guardian and receive directions for supporting their religion from one who must believe it a mortal sin not to endeavor to destroy it such a refined piece of breeding would not seem to be very well placed in the clergy who will hardly find precedents to justify such an extravagant piece of courtship and which is so unlike the primitive methods which ought to be our pattern he hath no such unreasonable tenderness for any sorts of men as to expect their faults should not be impartially laid open as often as they give occasion for it and yet he cannot but smile to see that the same man who setteth up all the sails of his rhetoric to fall upon the dissenters when popery is to be handled he doth it so gingerly that he looketh like an ass mumbling of thistles so afraid he is of letting himself loose where he may be in danger of letting his duty get the better of his discretion our trimmer is far from relishing the impertinent wanderings of those who pour out long prayers upon the congregation and all from their own stock which god knoweth for the most part is a barren soil which produceth weeds instead of flowers and by this means they expose religion itself rather than promote men's devotions on the other side there may be too great restraint to put upon men whom god and nature hath distinguished from their fellow laborers by blessing them with a happier talent and by giving them not only good sense but a powerful utterance too hath enabled them to gush out upon the attentive auditory with a mighty stream of devout and unaffected eloquence when a man so qualified endued with learning too and above all adorned with a good life breaketh out into a warm and well-delivered prayer before his sermon it hath the appearance of a divine rapture he raiseth and leadeth the hearts of the assembly in another manner than the most composed or best studied form of set words can ever do and the prewees who serve up all their sermons with the same garnishing would look like so many statues or men of straw in the pulpit compared with those who speak with such a powerful zeal that men are tempted at the moment to believe heaven itself hath dictated their words to em our trimmer is not so unreasonably indulgent to the dissenters as to excuse the irregularities of their complaints and to approve their threatening styles which are so ill-suited to their circumstances as well as to their duty he would have them to show their grief and not their anger to the government and by such a submission to authority as becometh them if they cannot acquiesce in what is imposed let them deserve a legislative remedy to their sufferings there being no other way to give them perfect redress and either to seek it or pretend to give it by any other method would not only be vain but criminal too in those that go about it yet with all this there may in the meantime be a prudential latitude left as to the manner of prosecuting the laws now in force against them the government is in some degree answerable for such an administration of them as may be free from the censure of impartial judges and in order to that it would be necessary that one of these methods be pursued either to let loose the laws to their utmost extent without any moderation or restraint in which at least the equality of the government would be without objection the penalties being exacted without remission from the dissenters of all kinds or if that will not be done and indeed there is no reason it should there is a necessity of some connivance to the protestant dissenters to excuse that which in humanity must be allowed to the papists even without any leaning towards them which must not be supposed in those who are or shall be in the administration of public business 
and it will follow that according to our circumstances the distribution of such connivance must be made in such a manner that the greatest part of it may fall on the protestant side or else the objections will be so strong and the inference is so clear that the friends as well as the enemies of the crown will be sure to take hold of them it will not be sufficient to say that the papists may be connived at because they are good subjects and that the protestant dissenters must suffer because they are ill ones these general maxims will not convince discerning men neither will any late instances make them forget what passed at other times in the world both sides have had their turns in being good and ill subjects and therefore tis easy to imagine what suspicions would arise in the present conjecture if such a partial argument as this should be imposed upon us the truth is this matter speaks so much of itself that it is not only unnecessary but it may be unmannerly to say any more of it our trimmer therefore could wish that since notwithstanding the laws which deny churches to say mass in not only the exercise but also the ostentation of popery is as well or better performed in the chapels of so many foreign ministers where the english openly resort in spite of proclamations and orders of council which are grown to be as harmless things to them as the pope's bulls and excommunications are to heretics who are out of his reach i say he could wish that by a seasonable as well as an equal piece of justice there might be so much consideration had of the protestant dissenters as that there might be at some times and at some places a veil thrown over an innocent and retired conventicle and that such an indulgence might be practised with less prejudice to the church or diminution to the laws it might be done so as to look rather like a kind of omission to inquire more strictly than an allowed toleration of that which is against the rule established such a skilful hand as this is very necessary in our circumstances and the government by making no sort of men entirely desperate doth not only secure itself from villainous attempts but lay such a foundation for healing and uniting laws whenever a parliament shall meet that the seeds of differences and animosities between the several contending sides may heaven consenting be for ever destroyed End of the trimmer's opinion concerning the protestant religion read by john greenman